I'd like to bring on, let me bring on our next person who, uh, who is Nelson Gonzalez from the IOM. And uh, he is, uh, Nelson has a lot of experience actually in border management. In, uh, in, uh, in, uh, he's been a consultant on identity management, travel document security, uh, on uh, um, or with, with special emphasis on the implementation of passport, identity cards, resident permits, visas, the whole border management information system that you have. Uh, he, he's, he's been advisor on this. He is trained, uh, he's on uh, with, with special uh, uh, background uh, experience within the African region as well. And since May, he is uh, coordinating the development of the IOM legal identity strategy in line with the UN global policy framework. Uh, Nelson, uh, just to come around with this picture, we've, we've seen the two borders in Asia. We've seen this border of the US-Mexico. We've heard of large numbers of people moving across these borders. These borders are in some cases regulated, in some not so heavily regulated, and in some cases very heavily militarized. Uh, in your own experience and with your experience within the African region, uh, there's been a recently a whole trade agreement across the African region. What would this mean? And what does Africa have at least some border situations like that we've just heard? And what does it mean for border management? Nelson, you will unmute your mic. Rakesh, can you unmute Nelson's mic? Uh, yes, yes. Thank yes. you very much. I was not able to, to unmute the mic. Thanks very much, uh, William, for the, for the invitation. And uh, all, all of you are well. Thanks for, for, uh, for this opportunity. Um, good afternoon and good morning to all, and hope you all well. Yes, that's a very good question. I mean, Africa is, um, I don't say this is a, is a special uh, situation, but it definitely has their specificities comparing with the other, the other areas of or regions in the world. Um, African Union is doing, in fact, a real, uh, a strong uh, push for them for the free movement protocols, not only on persons but also on, on trade. Because trade and development and free, free movement of, of persons are connected in, in in such a way. And even before this pre-COVID nineteen situation crisis situation, uh, where unprecedented massive um, restrictions to trade and to um, and to mobility uh, were you know laid on upon upon persons and and um, and traders. African Union was already being, you know, involved in in the in the in the, in the intention, or at least the objective, of opening up the borders. Um, the first step was launched in 2018, I think, 17, 18, two, three years ago, the African Passport, which was the first step for the you know, to to the, to the visa exemption. And you can freely visit and uh, travel from Cairo to Cape Town and from Dakar to Nairobi without the need of a, of a visa. So this is one situation. Then the the, the regional, uh, let's say, economic communities were able to come up either in the either internally intra-regional in inter-regional agreements on free movement protocols as well. Um, so the idea is to open up the borders to increase trade and to increase um, mobility of, of migrants. Uh, the borders in, in Africa, as you know, since the the post-colonial time, have been some in some situations dispute of borders which we will not talk about this is not the topic of this of this um, conversation of this presentation but uh, it's also um sometimes it's heavily regulated between uh, countries uh, african countries For, i give you a practical example i'm portuguese and i'm angolan so i have to do two national double nationalities and i have two passports if i want to travel from tanzania to uh, malawi for example i use my portuguese passport because i'm i'm visa free Exam, uh, exempt, so I don't have, I need a visa. If I use my Angolan passport, I need a visa and I have to pay $100. And this is within the African continent, being African, uh, using an African document, an African passport. So this will, uh, will um, is something that African Union is in fact working with, uh, with international organizations, with the United Nations, trying to solve this situation, trying to increase mobility and the exchange of goods and trade and development and, and migrants. This is one point. On the other hand, Countries must be prepared as well for the impact 
I'm talking about uh, social, economic, geographical, cultural, ge religious impact that the free movement protocol will bring to the countries. Let's look at what happened in the European Union that with since the, since like in the last 30, 40 years, there was there was at the beginning a huge impact of mobility between the 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 countries of uh, at the time uh, economic community. So this, the countries will need to prepare not only to, for the for the free agreements, for the free trade agreements, for the free movement protocols, all and all these uh, agreements that will increase uh, mobility, increase trade, and, and revenue, and exponentially will also provide opportunities to the to the African uh, citizens in within its own continent. But you also have to be prepared for the impact that comes with it, and be also be prepared to 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 face either, or having this. This uh, new ch new situation, not as a problem, but rather see this as an opportunity. The same goes for the COVID nineteen. So the the African uh, free trade agreement agreement, sorry, uh, it's rather um, I would say a response, or could be a, be used as a response, not only for the, the normal situation before COVID nineteen, but especially now with COVID nineteen, where African member states, in in cooperation with, uh, for example, IOM with ICAO, International Security Organization. Organization and other, you know, and also the private sector are trying to increase the mobility of and maintain not only increase but maintain and the open borders because for them, uh, for the African um, continent, the, the issue is not closing borders but rather managing borders. And managing borders means we need to adapt and to be flexible at a point that uh, whenever there is a problem or there is a, a challenge, we see that we see this as an opportunity. And um, there's a lot of situations that uh, IOM is also um, assisting our member states um, uh, to open and maintain the borders um, open. So go for, for example, for seamless and touchless uh, processes of border control, facial recognition on the move, facial, normal facial recognition. So we are trying uh, border resident communities, for example. One of the things that we are trying to, to assist our member states to increase mobility is between, between countries is to, to, to provide trusted programs for the border resident communities can cross freely on the other side of the border. We are also implementing, uh, assisting our member states implemented one stop border post with a single window, which is for us from our side and also from the member state perspective, a well, good solution to, to maintain and, ex and speed up the process at the border. Um, I don't know if you are familiar or some of you might be familiar with the one stop border post con uh, concept. Um, very briefly, you cross one country to another, you stop only once. So you have uh, a standardization of, of forms. So you fill one form, which is valid for two countries, and you'll be cleared once once you arrive at the border, you'll be cleared for the exit of country A and entry on country B. So this goes for immigration, customs, and all the agencies that are normally um, based on um, on the border. So this is something that sounds as well, I, member states are really uh, moving up on, on this, are really seriously implementing one software post across the continent. And uh, IOM is prevent, also um, assisting them and uh, with equipment, with, with capacity building, with sometimes the infrastructures. We develop, um, for example, mobile equipment to verify passports, uh, reading the chip, open the, the picture, and does facial recognition offline. So situations that uh, will directly uh, assist our member states to even in remote uh, borders without any internet or even without power, they can use the app um, on the cell phone to, to verify not only the passport, but also verify the identity of the person and matching each other. So this is something that we are doing uh, to have, you know, the borders in, in, the, in, the, in the African continent to have it not only regulated, but uh, and trying to to diminish the the, the, porosity, the porosity of the of those borders. Um, Thank you, uh, Nelson. Can I can I intervene here and ask you a question? Sure. Uh, as IOM does this, and we heard from the previous speakers as well, the challenge of of borders, especially uh, borders that have existed for a long time, in which people have. Uh, tended to move across freely kind yeah. of thing. And those exist, and I'm sure within the African region as well. As you speak of all the technology kind of focused way in which IOM is trying to manage uh, these borders, or at least to build capacity of states to, to regulate these borders, uh, do you see, do you fi sometimes find that you're on the wrong side in the sense of the regulation almost becomes part like of a state agenda of keeping, you know, 
of depriving people of of uh, the kind of mobility which we saw the previous three or four speakers speak about, which needs to be facilitated for the purpose of development, for the purpose of human development and things like that. Do you see sometimes IOM in that hotspot because of this? It's a very good question. Sometimes we have, uh, we face some challenges. For example, if you live in a country, in a, in a place where your the border to the next country, where you go shopping, for example, or you go to the hospital, is 100 meters away from your house. But if you need to cross the border, you have to get a bus, and go five, no, five or 10 kilometers to get in the border and go on the other side. You probably cross the border to the other side and then go to the bus, right? So this is something that the countries are, are aware of it. What we're trying to do with the member states is to create some incentives for people to, to, um, to, uh, to adhere to, for example, these border resident trusted programs uh, when they are reg biometrically registered and we create specific lines for them to cross the border. Because, and then they will give incentives on the other side of the border. For example, if they have this registration card, they will have access, um, they will be fast tracked, for example, some services on the other side of the border. It's talking about schools, it's talking about hospitals, or any other kind of, of situations that might increase the, the, the mobility and increase the, the adherence of those uh, communities within, within, within the, re the border res uh, resident uh, community. Is it, is it simple to do? Is it easy to do? No, it's not. It's really not easy to do. And sometimes even, even the, 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 low, I mean, the population sees the biometric registration as, a, as an intrusion of their own privacy. They don't understand why they need to do so. Because for the last 50 years, you just cross the border on the other side and nobody says anything. Why do they have now to be registered and uh, get a card and get a bus and go on the other side? So the work with local leaders, for example, it's very important. We need to, let's say, sell the, 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 the concept to the local leaders, to sometimes the re religious leaders as well. So they can, we can achieve a better, a better uh, understanding and the community, in fact, can, can, um, can link and can be uh, linked to this, to this project. It's been sometimes, uh, especially those on transhumans that goes on the other side to, to the border with, uh, with cattle, for example, it's been quite a challenge. And so far, the, if I'm telling you that the results are really high positive, I would be lying. Uh, there's some good results, but far from being in, you know, what, what the countries at least uh, would, would, um, would uh, aim for in the, in the, or at least they would like to have so far. Uh, it's something that could be um, you know, improved in the future, but in fact, the, the, the borders in, in Africa, and especially, you know, everybody knows that during the, the, the scramble for Africa, as they, as they normally say it, when they just you know, designed by, by uh, rule, and the borders, so they divide the communities in those countries. So we have, for example, uh, the Maasai in, in Tanzania and Kenya. So two thirds of the Maasai Mara is on in Kenyan side, one third is in in, um, in Tanzania side. So it's quite easy, for, quite difficult for the authorities to control a mobile, let's say, population that goes, uh, depending on the seasons, with the cattle from one side to the border. So this is something that there's are specific challenges that we need to face and we need to understand them. But apart from that, we have the normal borders, the, the airports, the sea borders and the land borders that are really operational. And we need to, to provide them not only equipment and capacity building, but standard operating procedures, for example. We need to, to, to understand how you know, the, the different challenges to speed up process, for example, for cargo, uh, which is something that we now do with the member states, dividing, for example, the cargo, um, the cargo, let's say trucks and volume of, of traffic in one side and the population on the other side. So we also create different ways of, of, uh, of uh, controlling goods, for example. So this is all in line with the, the free movement protocols and the free movement that uh, African Union is, is, is envisaged and foreseen in the, in the future. I would say medium long term, of course. So these are situations that we change not only with you know, very easily, there's always a resistance, initial resistance from from uh, from populations to uh, to these new uh, new let's say realities. But I'm sure that uh, when people when the population starts seeing uh, more let's say benefits from adhering to free movement protocols and free movement of of persons and and, and goods um, within the next uh, 30, 40 years, maybe I don't I don't do I don't want to say any, a specific data, but uh, in the medium long term, um, the African situation of borders will be completely different from what it is uh, at, at the moment.
Thank you. Thank you for that, Nelson. And I like that you give a kind of future perspective on it, which actually does talk in some way of the possibility of people moving along a regulated border, but more freely. And I, I and I, and uh, I'll come back to you on that. 